Hello, welcome to American National Government for the Spring 2022 semester. My name is Jonathan Parker, and as you can see from my courses here, I've been at this quite a while. I've been with the college since January 18th, teaching strictly political science courses. Uh, this semester looks a little different for me. I'm teaching every class that we have, uh, but typically um, it, it's three sections of this class, and uh, one of one of these others that you see. So uh, I'm, I'm very used to teaching this course. In fact, since the pandemic started in a variety of ways. So let's look in here. So you're all in section 1741. We'll click on that. As you can see, there's nothing here at the moment. Um, I'll make announcements. Um, you know, if, if I'm going to be out, uh, for the day, if I'm going, you know, if, if an uh, important assignment is coming due, um, et cetera, et cetera. Now don't depend on a reminder, look at your syllabus, but, um, when I think about it and if I remember, uh, because again, you know, this is just one institution that I work at, I'm teaching four different classes here. I'm teaching six unique classes at Heartland, so that's 10 classes I have to prep for individually, and uh, depending on how things go, I might get three more. So it's going to be a bit of a hectic semester. So I've clicked on course content. Uh, everything is going to be here uh, that you'll, you'll need, um, it, with the exception of the book, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, so I clicked on the syllabus. We know that we're in American National Government, Section 1741, from 9.30 to 10.45 a.m. with me, Jonathan Parker. Now, the number one problem, uh, and I'll just say this right off the bat, uh, that prevents emails from getting to me is that students don't spell my name correctly. They'll do this. They'll do that, uh, not, none of which is the correct way to sp spell my name. Uh, I don't know who these emails end up going to, uh, but some of them, I've been told, have been very angry. So uh, if you don't get an email back from me, uh, I would look at this as the first uh, option. When I was born, uh, this was the common way to spell Jonathan. I guess it's not anymore. So, my office, uh, 216C, and I share it with, uh, last semester it was one other adjunct. I'll, I'll know, uh, on Tuesday who I'm sharing it with this semester. Uh, and these are my office hours. So Monday, 2.15 to 3.15. Tuesday, 12.15 to 1. I'll be in the office. Uh, if I leave to get some lunch, I'll put a note on the door. Uh, I, I, get lunch from the the cafeteria so I'll, I'll i'll be right back literally um and then from 2 15 to 3 wednesday 2 15 to 3 15 thursday 12 15 to 1 and again you know i nobody really comes to see me during office hours i kind of sit in there and collect dust if, if i leave to make copies or something else i i will put a note on the door every time I'm, I'm never gone for more than five to seven minutes. So come on by, see me if you need help. Just know that, you know. Uh, other office hours by appointment. Uh, by appointment this semester, it would probably have to be a, a Zoom thing that we did. So before we begin, I know that we are in the middle of a transfer to Canvas. I am aware uh, from last semester that instructors have their content in every place imaginable. I've, I've heard all sorts of different learning platforms that I never knew existed. Uh, but for this class, make it nice and easy, everything will be on Blackboard. Under course content, everything, all the assignments, everything like that, it's just going to be under black on Blackboard under course content. This is the last semester we'll have Blackboard. Um, and the reason is I'm going to use some of the time to build um, this course out on Canvas for future semesters. All right, so Blackboard, we're only using Blackboard. All right,
right, I will let you read the course description, general information, learning outcomes on your own. Uh, I'm not going to insult you. Uh, the book. Yes, we do use the book. Uh, there are assignments that I want you to complete out of the book. You should be reading. The, it's the book anyway. It's an expectation that the book um, you're going to be reading along with what we're doing. If we cover federalism in class, you're going to cover federalism. You're going to read about federalism in the book. That is just the expectation. Um, I, I found out last semester and the semester before I have to explicitly state that. Uh, that is the expectation. You will be reading the book. Uh, if the book's online, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, I'm never quite sure from semester to semester. There are were physical copies available in the bookstore. Uh, if you want, if you're like me, I prefer the physical copies all the time. And then I give handouts throughout the semester. Uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. We didn't get to that last semester, but we got to everything else. So, course policies. Little technical problem, sorry about that. Uh, course policies. So, if you need to get a hold of me outside of class or office hours, utilize the email address listed at the top of page one. So, up here, make sure you spell my name right if you want me to get the email. All right, I will do my dead level best uh, to respond to all emails within 24 hours. Don't crucify me if it's 25. Um, I, I do have uh, an eight month old daughter. I do work more than a one job. I've, I, I have things going on outside of this as well, just like all you guys do. All right, I am an old school teacher in that I will not accept any electronic forms of submission for classwork, ever. Everything that you hand in must be a hard copy that you print out and bring to class. If you're sick, email me, let me know you're sick. Uh, when you can do so, bring a hard copy of your work to the next class that you attend. No questions asked. There should never be an instance where you are emailing me anything um work related and the reason for that is twofold actually one students again the problem with my name that i explained up on page one uh secondly i've gotten played uh more than a couple times with students telling me that they submitted an assignment and not my it's not in my records and oh you must have deleted the email it's just uh, a back and forth I would just rather avoid, to be quite honest, by just sticking to all physical uh, submissions. So that is what we are going to do. Uh, okay, I've gotten emails in the past stating something to the effect of, I can't come to class because I need to study for a test later. I'll turn in my work next class. Honest to God, this was an email that I got. Uh, take it from me. You will not be turning anything in that you missed if I receive an email for like that. Worded that way, that sentiment, whatever. Uh, it's extremely rude and disrespectful uh, to send that <laughs> email. Uh, you wouldn't send that to your boss. You wouldn't send that uh, to any. Don't send it to me. Uh, or any of your other teachers, really, if you want good letters of recommendation or, you know, um, it's just not good practice. Again, you wouldn't talk to your boss like that. I can't come in. I got to study for a test. I can't come in because I got to work at my other job. Uh, you're probably going to get fired. Uh, academic citation etiquette. I am big on this. Cite everything. Whenever you turn in a written assignment, you are required to cite your source. If you use a direct quote from a book, article, or website, you paraphrase a chunk of text from the book, article, or website. You present a theory, argument, opinion that does not belong to you. Cite it. All right? In text and in a bibliographic format. Bibliography, you're required to provide a list of sources that you have utilized 
uh, for the assignment. If you're completing like a book assignment, uh, yeah, I know where you got the information from. But if you want to, you know, if you want to overachieve and say, hey, you know, General Washington thought this about the proposed amendment, uh, and you use an article from uh, Politico to back up your source, the article from Politico would need to be cited, but not the book. So we will use the latest MLA format for bi 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 bibliographies and inline citations for this class. Uh, use the template and the following link to construct your bibliography. And I've taken the, the thinking out of it for you. Go to easybib.com and just plug in the information. I've taken all the thinking out of the equation. So just click on the Create Citations button on the first page of the website. Follow the steps thereafter. This works as of 9 o'clock on January 15th. Uh, I can't <laughs> answer for later on in the semester if something happens, if they start requiring payment. Or we'll find something else uh, to use later on. But as of right now, there's a go-to for you. Uh, inline citations are also expected in any writing assignments that you turn in where you have used outside sources. Again, I will state the book does not qualify. The textbook for this class does not qualify as an outside source. So you don't have to worry about that. So general guideline, if you have any doubts whatsoever about whether to submit or whether something needs to be cited, just create a citation for it. It just it takes a moment. Don't take chances with your grade. I am big on this again. I will call you out for it. All right. Wikipedia, not an academic resource. Wikipedia is not an academic resource. I'll say it one more time. Wikipedia, not an academic resource. Do not cite Wikipedia in any work that you do this semester. It will negatively impact your grade. Now the question is, Mr. Parker, how much will it negatively impact my grade? My answer to you, do you really want to find out? Just don't use it. All right. So you're gonna, if you want or you feel so moved to visit page 24 of the Student Rights and Responsibilities Handbook, it says this about academic misconduct or plagiarism. Based on the severity of the offense, the instructor may recommend failure for an assignment or failure for the course. Multiple instances of academic misconduct could include sanctions up to dismissal from the college. And this has been an issue every semester I have taught here. Every one. Um, the first time I catch you plagiarizing, I will give you a zero for whatever assignment you have plagiarized without the opportunity to redo it. And this includes major writing assignments. Last semester, I had two young men who I, I gave um, clemency to their class to, to turn in all their late work. Uh, they had plagiarized on four assignments. I, gave, I did give them zeros for every assignment that they plagiarized on. Uh, the second time I catch you plagiarizing, I will fail you for the course. I probably should have done that in the case of those two students, but it, we've had, we just about ran out of time. Uh, no exceptions to this will be made. And I also didn't clearly uh, line out, line up here what the first instance includes, if that's four assignments at once or whatever, but uh, you're going to get a zero and no opportunity for redo. So late submissions. As a rule, I do not accept late work. Um, Really, I do not like late work. So circumstances sometimes do occur that might prevent you from turning something in on time, and I completely understand that. Uh, if a circumstance like an illness or death in the family does occur, please make sure you talk to me, make sure that you have proof of what you said happened, did happen. Again, I've gotten played. I've trusted. That is my mistake, and that will be rectified going forward. A student last semester, for instance, lied to me about their grandmother dying. Uh, if you come at me with an excuse, also like this was, this also happened. Uh, a lot of the syllabus is built upon stuff that has happened to me in past classes that I don't want happening again. 
So if you come at me with an excuse, like, and this was pre-COVID, but this did happen. I went to a Chris Brown concert last night. Uh, no, not accepting the work. Or I had other homework to do. Again, probably not something you should say if you want a good letter of recommendation or, you know, just a good relationship with me. Uh, you will not be turning in anything. All right, so this is a standard 10-point grading scale, 190, 89, 80, 79, 70, so on and so forth. You guys are you should be used to this by now. Methods of presentation. Again, this is primarily a lecture discussion-based course. I'll incorporate a PowerPoint video. Some other material will uh, be there. You know, I, I we will progress to other types of presentation styles depending on how the class is going. Um, video lectures and assignments. I just felt the need to add this in. Uh, I, I will say first, every attempt will be made to keep this strictly a face-to-face -face class. I am zoomed out, video recorded out. I mean, I, I've had as much of it as I can handle as I think uh, since you signed up for a face-to-face -face course, many of you, if not all of you, have as well. Uh, however, with Omicron and all this, you know, the world we live in, it's still turbulent times. We still can't rule out the possibility that we may go back to remote learning. Again, I can't say that for certain. That's a decision that's way, way, way above my pay grade. But we just looking at the statistics, the numbers, I, I personally can't rule that out. Uh, so I'm just saying, you know, I would keep the 9.30 to 10.45 time slot open all semester. Um, you know, if we do go remote, don't go to your job and say, oh, I, want, I can work a shift from 9.30 to 11.30. Uh, no, you can't. You have class then. If we are forced back to virtual learning, and I use the word <laughs> forced uh, with a heavy heart because I don't want to do it either. Video lectures and assignments will be posted on Blackboard. I might do some Tuesdays and Thursdays asynchronously, meaning you do it on your own time, but I would anticipate a few Zoom meetings if we have to go remote again. I really hope we don't. I've been given no indication that we will. Again, I have been given absolutely no indication that that's going to happen, but I just can't rule it out. All right. So this is what you really care about, your grade. 80% uh, of your grade. We're going to have 225-point tests, a college-mandated essay, which um, might be your test, too. I haven't quite made up my mind about that. I can just bump that up to 125 points. Uh, quizzes throughout the semester, announced and unannounced. Um, just between you and me, I, I do give, you know, if, if there is a quiz, I tend to let you work together or take it as a class or something like that. Um, Pre-test, post-test, I'll explain more about that when you're in class. Uh, attendance, you do get graded for attendance. There's a term paper, a mini speech, Federalist papers, book assignments, classwork, homework. I had to get excessive with this last semester uh, just because um, we were doing a lot of hybrid and um, I could see that videos and things were not being watched. So uh, there will be significantly, and I mean probably by a factor of, of 25 or so, less work. All right, it'll probably be closer to 100 points uh, this semester, but I still expect more. Uh, so, news resources, evaluation of student achievement, you can read that on your own. The final, also 20% of your grade, and we'll talk about what that means later on in the semester. Uh, news resources. Below is a useful list of news resources, NPR. Uh, Illinois Policy, Politico, Economist, BBC. I found that foreign uh, news agencies cover us um, in the United States in a more fair and balanced way than our own guys do. Some of these are a little left. Some of these are a little right. I, I've tr I tried to, you know, if this is the center, I tried to keep it there. 
Uh, so, I, but I leave it to you to scroll through those at your leisure and make your own decisions. All right, this course is somewhat cumulative in nature, uh, meaning not all topics that we cover are created equally. I'll go down here to um, the course list. So like federalism, that is the building block upon which everything is uh, built. So what I mean by it's somewhat cumulative, you might take test one, be quizzed on, tested on federalism, uh, and, you know, you might see questions again on a quiz or a test. I keep trying to drum the concepts into you. Uh, that's what I mean. So I do not advise taking a test and then forgetting about the material. All the tests are, unless there's, unless again we go remote or there's a really good reason why I need to, uh, the tests are all paper. Uh, I do not advise taking a test and then forgetting about the material. Bad news, the tests are rewritten every semester. Um, good news, you'll have the test back to study for the next quiz or test. I have arranged this course so that one topic builds on another. You will be hearing and dealing with everything we study throughout the semester, and that is the truth. Keep your notes and study. Again, it is not my responsibility to chase you down to make sure you're keeping up with your work. I have way too many students in the colleges I work at to be doing that. Uh, it is your responsibility to come to me or ask a classmate if you have a relationship with a classmate uh, if you missed something. If you choose not to do this, if you're like, well, he's going to get back to me. He's going to tell me what I missed. I'm, I'm not. Uh, don't be surprised if you start seeing a lot of zeros on Blackboard. All right, attendance. Students are expected to attend class each week. Attendance is defined as completing classwork, doing homework assignments, as well as attending lectures. You might think, well, duh, but I have had to refine that definition, and that has, that's been a problem also. Uh, there is a 100 point grade attached to you showing up for class, to class to encourage attendance. Um, I, I'm not a big fan of this. I wish I didn't have to do it. Again, I can only go based on past precedent, and past precedent, since I've worked here, says that I need to do this to get you guys to show up. So I'm sorry about it, but that's the way it, it is. I wish I didn't have to. Uh, there's going to be a binder. It's a big red binder in front of the class. There's going to be a attendance sheet that says your class um, and lists all your names. It's your responsibility to find your name, check off that you were here on uh, January 18th, which is the first day we'll meet. Uh, this is for also reporting purposes when the college asks me to mark never attenders and non-attenders. If you do not sign in for a class, I'm really, I'm not going to remember if you were there or not. Uh, if you do not sign in for a class, you were not present. Again, my memory's good. My memory ain't that good. So I, I, I am really not going to know if you were there or not. It's, it, it's not like, uh, it was. I, I, I know there are quite a few freshmen in here. It's not like high school. All right. When it comes time for me to determine attendance, I'll look at the binder, see when the last time you came to class was, and Blackboard to see what you've turned in. You cannot both miss lectures and not turn in homework and expect to stay in and succeed in the course. So the college says 5% of classes missed during a semester constitutes an excessive number of absences for a class and may merit being dropped. Now, I, I didn't get into teaching to drop students. All right, 5% is one week of classes. This is a 16-week course. We will meet 32 times, give or take, if I have to cancel or not, or if we go remote or whatever it is. Um, that's one week. All right, so that's Tuesday, Thursday. That's 5%. 
This will be the guideline I will use when determining non-never attenders. I've had to drop students for excessive absences. I don't like it. I don't want to do it. I hope this semester is the semester where nobody makes me do it. Uh, just come to class. All right. I uh, note here, I, I had students last semester uh, who thought class was canceled and didn't come to class for two weeks because they thought that I had COVID. I, I don't get it. I don't understand why that was, uh, but thinking that I'm out with COVID or out for any reason uh, without verifying it with me, and you won't ever need to verify it with me because I'll tell you, and if I don't tell you, there will be a note on the door uh, from the humanities office. That's an unacceptable excuse to miss class, and that's going to be an unexcused absence and I'm going to dock you points for that. Uh, I, again, I don't under, that was odd. I don't understand why that happened. Uh, but there it was. Takeaway should just be keep an open line of communication with me. You're going to be fine. If you have questions, ask questions. If you want to come to office hours, come to office hours. I would actually like that. I've worked here four years now. I've had five students come to office hours, all told, in that amount of time. Uh, you're going to learn something. I hope you might even enjoy yourself. All right, here is the projected course schedule. We usually will spend about a mm, half a week. So in this case, Tuesday to two weeks on any given topic. Uh, so, you know, it'll be a class period to four class periods on any given topic here. All right, test one, February 24th, 2022. I am loath to move a test date. Uh, so this be in class, unless you're sick, in which case do not come to class. We will work something out. But be in class, February 24th, 2022, so you can take your exam. Uh, we'll cover everything, political parties, the presidency, the possible quiz here would be that maybe the college mandated essay. Again, it's an assessment that the college wants me to do, this essay that I'm talking about. And here's the prompt. Um, describe the basic structure and distribution of governmental authority and influence in the United States. It's a fairly easy prompt. It's a fairly easy rubric. The college wants me to uh, assess you by having you write an essay on this. So that we will do. And now we're going to go back to where we were. So that might be the quiz. Um, that might be something also I give you to take home. I haven't quite made up my mind yet. I haven't had to do that in three or four semesters now. Uh, so test two, April 14th, 2022. Um, we don't usually get to this, but in some semesters we have final exam the college is already put out thursday may 12th from 9 to ten fifty in our usual classroom all right you're going to have spring break from march 14th to march 18th and the last day of class for us is may 5th the official last day is may 9th but that's a monday and so we'll be done with uh, class on may 5th so guest lectures series, um, I, th I I have a few people lined up, you know, because I know you get sick of hearing my voice after a while, uh, who have practical political experience, who, you know, are, are politicians themselves, lobbyists, things like that, who don't charge me to come in and speak to my class. That's uh, the biggest reason why we get these people. It's not for political from political affiliation. It's not any of that other stuff. It's just simply because I take my own initiative to do this and bring in these these people who have a lot of practical political experience. Um, and I usually, well, well, not usually. I have, I, <laughs> I don't pay them. They come of their own free will and accord. So if there is a guest, it's because the guest didn't charge me. Uh, if that can be arranged this semester, and I think it can, I think we can start bringing people in again. 
I will make it happen. So I reserve the right to add or subtract from any part of the syllabus at any point in time as the semester progresses. Uh, I will attempt to notify you of changes during regular class meetings through Blackboard and or through email. I usually just send out a, an announcement and say send all and that usually does it. So we have planned assignments. There is a mini speech. I read a while ago that people were less scared of dying than they were of public speaking. Uh, we've got to do it. Uh, you know, it, nobody is comfortable speaking in public, myself included. I get nervous still when there's a, a new class I have to go in and talk to. You know, I, you don't know what you're getting. So learning to speak publicly, answer questions, it's an important life skill that you need to learn and become as comfortable as humanly possible with before you move on to a four-year institution or your career. Uh, most of you guys are, are going to transfer out to a four-year, but I've had many, many students who just move on. Uh, having the confidence to communicate with whoever it is in a respectful manner is going to serve you in good stead for the rest of your life. So, you're going to pick any politically oriented topic that having, having to do with America or American politics uh, that you would like. I really don't put many restrictions on these things um, and prepare a three-minute argument as to why you support or oppose the subject you've chosen. I've given you some examples. Uh, I will pass around a sign-up sheet during the second week of classes. Uh, the speeches will be given in person. You have to present or deliver the speech on the day you sign up for. So that requires you like writing down the day that you signed up for. Uh, that's also been a problem, which is why I mention it. And this is exactly how I'm going to grade you. That I mean, I'll have a rubric made up, but this is it right here. All right, so you know exactly what you need to do to get 50 points out of 50 that it should honestly be a I, I've have very rarely had to give less than a 50 all right but what's going to get you a zero right away without any chance to change your grade interrupting a classmate in the middle of the speech interrupting a classmate trying to ask a question we live in a hostile political environment I know this we have to have to have to learn to respect diverse opinions without getting nasty about it all right and i'm very serious about that anybody tries that it's a zero right off the bat you don't even give the speech if you have yet to deliver it all right federalists papers so uh these were not the anti-federalists but the federalist papers were written uh in The Federalist Papers, excuse me, you'll learn as the semester progresses. So sometimes I have trouble with the English language. So uh, these were written to support the passage of the Constitution. Uh, you need to be exposed to these. These are just too important for me not to uh, show you at some point. I don't know what your past history has been like. Uh, the students I've gotten in the past had a semester of civics, maybe during their sophomore year of high school, maybe saw one or two of these papers, and that's been it. Uh, also, the level of difficulty of the text. So these papers are more difficult reading than what you might have been exposed to up to this point. There's an attempt here to raise the level and um, hopefully prep you for your four-year institution. So here's the link to the papers. You just click on this. Uh, then what I want you to do, once you find these papers, look at what is assigned. So 52, 53, 54, 55, and 56. So you're going to click on this link, or you're going to paste this link in your address bar, go there, click on paper 52, you're going to fill out a worksheet here for paper number 52. You're going to click on 53, repeat the process, 54, repeat the process, 55, repeat the process, 56, repeat the process. All right, so 
fill out the answers to each question on the worksheet on page 11 of your syllabus for every paper assigned. Each worksheet is worth 10 points total. All right. This um, was a problem last semester. Every question. There is nothing on this paper that is optional. All right. Write two questions to the author. If you understand it and you have no questions, make two questions up. All right. Leave nothing blank. So answer all the questions, hit on the main points, you know, spelling and grammar do count. I am looking at that. I'm not an English teacher, uh, but, you know, if you make an excessive amount of these types of errors, I'm going to dock you. So please proofread uh, and really give an opinion on, on what you have read. You know, do you feel that we have stuck with these, with the big ideas you listed in question four? as a country. Um, you know, uh, in the past, people have said, I'm not qualified to give an opinion. This, to me, is not true. You're all American citizens or have taken up residence in this country for a specified reason for a certain amount of time. You know what it's like here. You should have some idea of how things go. If you don't, I'm pretty sure you'll have access to somebody who does. You are qualified to give an opinion. All right? So tell me. And again, just to reiterate, fill out a worksheet for every Federalist paper assigned. Students have gotten Fs, and by Fs I mean zeros, in the past because they haven't read the directions and chose a single Federalist paper to analyze. This is not, you know, what's due on February 17th. I'm not, I am not giving you a choice here, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. Oh, pick one. No, you do them all. And I, I'm saying this sternly and repeating this quite a bit because I don't want any of you to come back with just one worksheet. All right. Here's another problem we can just dispense with right now. I have a calendar of all the assignments and their due dates on the last page. Federalist paper number one, that just is the first set of Federalist papers. That's 52, 3, 4, 5, and 6. I've had students submit a worksheet in which they analyze literally Federalist paper number one. Don't do that. All right, now back to the book. So how do you get to the book? Good question. You click on course information. You click on open Pearson, which I have done. You'll come to the class textbook. You'll click on that. Then you'll come to a page like this. You guys might have to fiddle around with this a little bit. I, um, I don't obviously have the version of the book that you're going to have in front of you. Uh, so open the book. Again, to remind you, we are only reading from the book. That's it. That's all. If you come to me uh, and say, Parker, hey, I submitted that assignment on Revel. We're never going to do that. You are never going to do that. We're not doing anything with the book except reading from it on the screen. That's been hard enough to achieve with 100% success um, since I've started and since we've adopted this particular online textbook. Um, for some students, it just does not work and it cannot work no matter what we do. Uh, so I also give paper handouts uh, to kind of troubleshoot that problem since I don't know what to do either. And um, it's hit or miss whether the help desk can do anything about it. Uh, so, you know, you'll open up American government, roots, context, and culture. You know, you'll pick what we, you know, you pick out what we uh, 
what you need to do. So, you know, if you have the physical copy, read pages 25 to 32. If you're using the online textbook, so I give instructions for both. You know, if you open the table of contents and read sections 2.2 and 2.3, summarize the reading and answer the question. So you're doing two things. One, you're summarizing the reading, you're answering a question. Identify the components of the Articles of Confederation and the reasons for their failure. And there are three book assignments that you're going to do throughout the course of the semester. Again, we're using the book. You're reading from the book. That is the expectation. If we're covering a topic, you're reading about it from the book as well. Then there's the term paper, the rough draft, which is due March 31st. So you will pick an option from the below. There are four options. Uh, and write your term paper on the choice you make. You cannot go back on your choice once you've committed to an option. So if you choose to write about Magna Carta and say you get a rough draft grade back of a D from me, uh, you can't submit a final draft on Representative Thaddeus Stevens. You've got to fix up that Magna Carta paper. All right. You will receive a grade from of for the rough draft that you turn in to me. So I will create a column on the grade in the grade book that says term paper, and I will put in the grade for your rough draft. I do that to help some of you who elect not to turn in a final draft. So at least you have a draft or a grade in for the hundred fifty point assignment. So that grade stands on Blackboard unless or until, and I say that because some people just don't, you turn in a final draft of the paper that addresses my concerns and comments. Any paper turned in after March 31st, and this is the first semester I've had to do this because last semester it was a bit of an ordeal, will be considered the final draft meaning you forfeited your chance at a rewrite. Any paper turned in after March 31st, again, that I'm going to write final draft on it, uh, unless there is some circumstance we've spoken previously. Uh, there will be no opportunity for revisions, again, if I get the paper after March 31st. So there are four options here. I'll let you read through those on your own. And if you have questions, of course, um, shoot me an email, talk to me in class. So we come to the last page, and uh, there's here's a calendar with the due dates for all the planned assignments. Again, this is a question I get every semester. We will be doing other things than these planned assignments. All right, but these are just the assignments I know we will do and have and can give you definitive dates for. So that is why that this exists. There will be other things. You know, you'll have to pay attention, write things down in class. But the book assignments, the Federalist Papers, the term paper, the tests, the Anti-Federalist Paper, um, the final exam, all that. It's here for your convenience. I was told in the past that my syllabus was too hard to follow. Uh, maybe it is. Uh, it's not for me to say. Um, but you have it all right there on that last page. So you can see, oh, I have an assignment due uh, January 27th. Book assignment number one. What is that? So that might be an easier thing to do than to... Than try to flip through all the pages. So book assignment number one, and it's in order of when it needs to be turned in. So January 27th, February 10th. I tried to make it as easy as possible for you guys. Uh, so that is it from me. Uh, you've survived the <laughs> syllabus lecture. Uh, if you are watching this video, you need to ask me for a syllabus quiz when you come to class or when you come back to class. Uh, and we would have also gotten to a pretest. So ask me for that too.
Now, come up and ask me. Don't assume that I know, especially if you're a late registrant, that you're new. You know, uh, there, there's a lot of movement that goes on the first week or so between classes. So, two things again. If you're watching this video, come ask me for a syllabus quiz. Come ask me for a pretest. All right. I sound a lot stricter in this video than I than I actually am. It's just I have to kind of lay down the law. I look forward to a, a wonderful semester with you guys. I'm so glad we're back face to face. Uh, I'm so glad none of these classes are hybrid. And I, I, I just look forward to getting to know you and um, being fully back in the classroom. All right. We'll see you around.